oftentimes, even myself, we get so busy with work, friends, and all other responsibilities that we often forget or don't have time for ourselves. As a result, our well-being becomes something like that check engine light in our car, something we will get to when we have time or energy. But we never really truly end up having time or energy. And when we finally prioritize our well-being, it's usually when it's too late and the damage is done. Our well-being should be our top priority. Hey everyone, my name is Philip, and in this video I am going to go over why I put myself first and why you should too. I'm also going to go over what I have learned and how I will never go back to putting myself last. At first, I never really understood the concept of putting yourself first. Like, where does the line draw between selfish and self-care? Growing up, I was a people pleaser, and to this day, I still am, but with boundaries now. <laughs> it's in my nature to put others before me. I care for people's health. And at one point in the past, when I was caring for other people, I never cared for myself. I was the biggest hypocrite. I remembered I gave a long lecture to my patient who was admitted for a heart attack about the importance of diet and exercising for heart health. As soon as I left the hospital after a long day of work, I drove my behind straight to McDonald's and got myself the heart attack combo. I got the McNuggets, the fries, the Oreo McFlurry, and that crispy chicken McSandwich. Hashtag self care, right? However, I didn't have the time or energy to cook myself a healthier meal. I was exhausted from work, sleep deprived. I had to work again the next day. I was really putting my well being last. I had this false sense of putting myself first because I didn't feel sick. I didn't have any pain. My breathing was fine. Heart is beating. Did not experience any discomforts physically or mentally. I fell into the thinking of because I felt fine, there's nothing that needs to be addressed right now. Only when something comes up is when I need to address it. After I had a recent doctor appointment and just further reflection on how I was feeling at the time, I had this revelation. My lifestyle was very similar to the patient I had lectured that was admitted for a heart attack. He worked a lot. Hardly ever gave his health a second thought because he felt fine until he wasn't and never really put himself first. He only started to put himself first because something happened. This is when I had another revelation. After my experience working in the medical field, it's easier to prevent than to reverse or slow damage. In my patient's case, the damage was irreversible all that was left for him to do was to slow the progression of the disease. This became a huge lesson to me because I was fortunate enough to realize all of this at a young enough age before I'd done any damage to my body. From this point on, I realized that in order to prevent damage, it means that I need to truly invest in myself. It has become my responsibility. Nobody can prioritize my health and well-being better than I can. To this day, I've learned two things about prioritizing myself. The first is that it goes beyond just physical health. It includes mental health as well. Second, I've learned that in order for my efforts of prioritizing myself to be sustainable, there has to be a balance between want and needs. 
If I were to only do 100% of what I need and never what I want, my pursuit of prioritizing myself would not last. Now, this is a very specific example. However, it has a very broad application. If I were to never have the heart attack combo at McDonald's ever again, that would be mentally straining. As Especially since when I know that when I can't have something, it makes me want it even more. So instead, I find an appropriate and reasonable balance between when I can have it and when I can't. And because of that, prioritizing myself becomes sustainable. Why? Because I am prioritizing and satisfying my want and my needs. Balance. Who knew that is good for you? So back to the original question. Where does the line draw between selfish and self-care? I like to view the relationship of self-care and selfish like a Venn diagram. The difference between selfish and self-care is the difference of want versus needs. Doing what you want over what needs to be done is considered selfish and doing what you need to do over what you want to do would be considered self-care. However, sometimes there is an overlap of selfish and self-care. There are things that fit into both selfish and self-care category, meaning what you want and need could be the same thing. What I've learned is that the more things I find in the overlap section, the easier and more enjoyable it is to prioritize my well-being. How? Because I'm satisfying both my want and needs with one stone. It makes sticking to habits a lot easier, allowing for sustainable health. So that is all for this video. I just wanted to share my journey and why I prioritize my well-being. Hopefully this inspires or motivates you as well to never forget to put yourself first. It is never too late to get started. It is always better to prevent damage than to try and reverse it or slow it down. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Take care.